Nyabiange Odia, who is a family law expert. And Pastor Wesley, the reason as to why some of the clergy um, are requesting their church members who are planning to get married to undergo this HIV test, it is uh, for the sake of protecting the flock. Yes. Um, brother, it is important that we don't also, um, you know, get to a point where we are not protecting the flock and giving them the right counsel. And uh, we used actually also to require the same, but when the law was put in place, we said the, the law is trying to protect also the people from discrimination, it's trying to protect people from, you know, their, their I mean, their privacy being known by other people, for, from being uh, a, a kind of, you know, having stigma against them. But at the same time, it is important that the two people who are getting married know their status. We, I, I have no business intruding into their private affairs, but at the same time, I have a responsibility to protect the flock and to protect this relationship because definitely we have had cases of people discovering when they get married, when they get wedded and they get married, they discover the, other, the spouse was HIV positive, they never disclosed, and therefore they never even took uh, precaution, and uh, they are uh, either sick or very sick, or not only that, uh, we have had deaths, and then when, when the death has taken place is when the other spouse realizes that the, this other person was a carrier, or when one person discovers, they either do like the unfortunate thing of, you know, what we are hearing in Nakur, one person, you know, kills himself and kills the other person, or one person kills himself because of, you know, the stigma that they have gotten. And so to prevent that, it is advisable for the two people who are seeking to get married. So, Pastor... You know their status, and then after they know their status, they make an informed decision. So, Pastor and Wesley... it is them to make the decision. Pastor Wesley... They, yes. What happens if yes. a couple that you... Let's talk about a scenario. Let me bring you into the picture, practical picture. What happens to a couple that it yes. happens that one partner is positive and the other is negative? What will you do as a clergy? I have had cases like that. Mm -hmm. And they, they have come and said, do you know your status? Yes. Uh, one of us is positive, the other one is negative. But we are still committed to each other and we are making a conscious decision into going into it. Even if I don't marry them, they will still do it because they, they already know. They will not come back later and uh, tell me, oh, you know, uh, this one did not know, this one did not know. So at that point, we leave it to them. It is them to make the decision that they are getting married. They will go uh, knowingly and they also go uh, knowing how to take care of themselves because there are ways that they can be able to take care of their, 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 their encounters, sexual encounters and such. And, uh, for, for uh, if I don't do them uh, do it uh, when they are already committed, they will still do it, but without counsel. So, Jen, do you agree with what Pastor Wesley is saying? Uh, well, I partially agree with him. Uh, as a man of God, kindly I would advise: share the information, take action, but take the action within the confines of the law. What was so difficult for one Jesse Karanja to cancel this wedding possibly 14 days before? Why did he wait until the material day? This couple has struggled to bring relatives far and wide. They have spent huge sums of money to put together a ceremony. And then later in the afternoon, if what I've read from the article is exactly what happened at the scene, that is unacceptable. Share the information, that is okay. It was the choice of these young people to worship in that church. It was their choice to have one Jesse Karanja to join them. It will also be their choice if they discover that they are both posit positive, or one of them is positive, either to proceed with the marriage or not. I would rather that the couple themselves canceled the wedding the last minute. So, but Jen, not. so Jen, what is the way forward? Should the churches stop this whole demand of medical tests from couples? I would, I would hesitate to say yes or no, because every church has its own regulations, it has its own uh, principles that are guiding them. 
and uh, just for disclosure is that I'm a Christian. So it is, it is the church to be alert to the provisions of the law. We, I do not refuse Pastor Wesley counseling for the couples, pre, premarital counseling, it is important. But if you discovered I'm HIV positive, give me the information and let me proceed either to cancel the marriage or to add other than breaking the law. And we have a constitution which guarantees me a number of rights. Really, for you to cause me an inconvenience. I can imagine that young couple running helter skelter that morning, seeking for medical tests, the one that the pastor wants from a specific hospital. Why that specific hospital? What interest did the pastor have? So, Pastor Wesley, when it comes to privacy, because um, you've said that you're not infringing on the right of uh, an individual when the church is requesting for the medical test, but when it comes to storage of some of the confidential, you know, documents that have been brought to the church. Well, I, I think in the first place, I want to say I agree with Madam, Madam Jane totally on the issue of... Uh, as being able to follow the guidelines to be able to advise the flock and to protect the flock, but at the same time complying within the, the law. Because even you realize, actually, there is a lot of issues to do with privacy that have been broken in this case, particular case we are discussing, whereby even defamation now can come in. You know, I mean, the, 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 the pastor can be taken to court for defamation uh, because uh, the, the, you, are, you have let these people go out and there is ridicule and people are just saying wow and of course the, it is not even known whether it is true or not because there are two previous tests and then there is this other, uh, other test and uh, what you have said, I w just want to affirm what you have said is let this thing be done early like for us we insist before we even start the premarital counseling uh, course uh, or class we, they get to know their status so that when we are, we, when we are counseling them we are counseling them within the context but what you are, you are asking, brother, is important. How do we even store that information in the first place? Because again, this information, if it is stored in a manner likely that it will be also uh, private, I mean, other people will be private to it, then it means we are not protecting these people from the, the, you know, the, the issue about uh, this matter being confidential. And so the, the information, actually, the requirement should be that after they have made their status known, they carry their information with them. So okay. you don't have to have it stored somewhere for reference by anybody else. Mm -hmm. So what happens, now you've requested the couple to submit the medical report before they get married. After that, do you request also the couple to give you the medical test after six months? Well, I... I <laughs> no, I, I think, Brenda, what you asked previously, and I'm answering again, is we only want them to give us, to, to get the information for their own sake. And I think Madam Jane has said that it is them to make the decision after they have been given the information. Once they get the information, they make the decision. After that, we are not going to be following after every three months, are you, still, are you still positive or negative after one year? I don't think that is the calling of the pastor or any okay. other person to be able to do that. Okay. And Jen, um, should, as a family law expert, should this couple, the couple that were not wedded on Saturday and any other couple that's been compelled to submit the medical report, should they take legal action? Oh, definitely, I would say yes. And family so, especially this particular couple of Nakuru. Uh, I'm looking at the HIV Prevention and Control Act. It establishes a tribunal. This young couple can proceed there and file a complaint right away against the pastor. Secondly, a civil action can be brought against one Jessica Ranja. These people have suffered they have suffered both waste of resources. They have, they have been traumatized. I think psychologically, I'm sure they do not even walk outside so that people do not see them. So they have been traumatized, and they can also bring a course of action against the pastor. So for me, from where I'm standing, somebody should tell them that they should in action. Thirdly, but not least, this one Jessica Ranja. If I was 
the, the register of marriages today, I would have recalled, like yesterday, the license that w has been donated to one Jesse Karanja to be recalled and revoked immediately because he does not understand what powers he's holding in his hand as a marriage officer. I think he thought his church donates that power to him. Okay. That power is donated by the Marriage Act. Yep. Okay. Him. And Pastor Wesley, why just HIV? But brother, I think... Okay. As, as, you give, as, as you respond to what... Yeah, uh, I, I think... As you respond to what Jenna said, because it looks like you have something to add to what Jenna said, my question also yes. is, why HIV AIDS only? Why not any other test, you know, high blood pressure or STD? Well, I think uh, let's, let's uh, put things in perspective. The first thing is, I think the government also should be held accountable because they should not release um, the, the wedding certificate just because somebody is coming and paying. I think there should be a requirement that every uh, minister, every person who is being given the authority to be able to be a marriage a uh, uh, marriage, uh, you know, uh, officer, officiate, officiate, uh, to officiate marriage, should have the knowledge of what is required in the law before a marriage is declared legal in the in the in the laws of Kenya. I think that kind of education, it is civic education that needs to be done, because definitely we don't want to see this kind of thing happening again and again. This can even cause young people to choose not to even go to church to have their weddings. And, All right. and so the government has a responsibility. The Attorney General's office has a responsibility to be able to ensure that any person who is getting this certificate has the requisite knowledge on what is required as a marriage registrar because All they right. act on Pastor, behalf of the marriage registrar. Pastor Wesley, uh, yes. we, we are finishing this conversation. I'll give you a minute and I'll also give Jen a minute as we wind up. My question was, why does HIV and AIDS test, not any other medical test? In a minute. Well, when, through, through premarital counseling, there are so many other things that, we, uh, the, uh, that are required. It's not only the HIV uh, test. There are so many things about the values of the person, about the faith of the person, about the background of the person, about the lifestyle of the person. All those things come in place, but of course, some of them don't need to, to go. And we also even want to ask the, the couples to disclose if they have any, uh, you know, like... Uh, uh, sicknesses that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 that would hinder the effective operations of the marriage. Okay. All that is within the context of premarital counseling. And I want to urge the ministers also okay. that let us do comprehensive premarital counseling before we do the wedding. All right. Thank you so much, Pastor Wesley. Jen, your uh, last uh, parting shot in a minute. In closing, I want to say that it's high time we stopped the stigma that is attendant to HIV and AIDS. I think where we are right now, it's not only about HIV and AIDS. We have many other more serious diseases that are killing people in this country. So for people to be stigmatized because of HIV and AIDS status, it is wrong, it is unlawful, and the same should not be allowed to stand, and or, I think the action of Jesse Karanja should be treated with the contempt okay. that it deserves. Okay, thank you so much, Jane Nyabiage Odi, a family law expert, and Pastor John Westlingu, who's talking to us from a city center studio, a pastor from Seta Ministries. Thank you so much, lady and uh, pastor.